This is a plaque that's in the town quay. Um, this is a part of a series of films to commemorate D-Day, which was June the 6th. Uh, this is the uh, Royal Pier area. At the top of the picture, you can see that white building is the Royal Southern Yacht Club, now defunct. In between, you can see Bugle Street and the medieval wall house on the other side of the road. At the bottom of the picture is the Royal Pier, now Cutie's Restaurant. Obviously, the Royal Pier is now derelict. Top of the picture, that white building is the town quay with a black roof. That's the town quay now where the um, location of the Isle of Wight ferry as well. There we can see the landing stage in the, in the water. I want to draw your particular attention to those objects in the water that look like groins. The technical name for them are dolphins. And as we'll see later in the film, they were used to steer landing ships and landing craft onto the correct embarkation hard. In this case, we're talking about embarkation hard S2. We've already seen in the previous film S1, which was down by dock gate 8. This is embarkation hard S2, which was located at the Royal Pier. And this is the Isle of Wight ferry arriving to disembark at Southampton. See those groins in the water? You get the dolphins, you can just about make them out. They're in fact leading to that object that's rusting away next to the Royal Pier is part of the Mulberry Harbour. It is in fact a unique part of the Mulberry. They've got a part of the Mulberry Harbour they think is unique at um, the Imperial War Museum at Duxford. But in fact we've got one down here and it's, it's a very special one because it includes the, the landing stage that goes alongside at the Buffer Pontoon which allowed um, vehicles to climb onto and off of the Mulberry Harbour. That was the artificial thing assembled in March with across the water taken over to Normandy and allowed our troops to get ashore more quickly. This is the skipper of the landing ship we're looking at. You should know the location now. We've just seen that white building at the top left hand corner. That's the Royal Southern Yacht Club, the Bugle Street between the Wool House. That's St. Michael's steeple, of course, in the background. This film's uncatalogued film in the uh, Imperial War Museum. The roads leading south to the sea grew more and more close-packed with tanks, trucks and guns. And in harbours all over Britain, ships of the invasion fleets cast off and began to move down coastal waters to the Channel. Many of these little ships had been built far from the sea in the heart of America. Others hailed from the Mersey or the Clyde. Escort vessels, assault craft, tank and infantry landing craft were crammed uh, into the harbour. I've of the included sea. these pictures because they show you the town key. So this is what the town key there is. A bit different from the building we saw earlier, the white building with the black roof. That's the town key. And this is the landing ship tank that's nicknamed Large Slow Target going out to see this is d-day plus eight so this isn't on d-day this is bringing up reinforcements this is a short clip that i can only find the canadian troops i don't even think this is d-day i think this might be um by the look of them a um rehearsal this is actually um american uh relief or a boarding at s2 uh, on the embarkation hard you can see uh, the royal pier in the background if we get another shot of it, if you look at the big building, is the um, is the ballroom, and uh, you can recognise it because it's got a sort of uh, cupola on top. And here we can see the Americans uh, loading. This is in December, so this goes to show you how uh, Southampton was utilised during the war. It was uh, from to the end of hostilities, the only port that was used for uh, D-Day or for Operation Overlord till the end of the war. And there we get the landing ship there. This is uh, for another one of the purposes used. Uh, this is Millen, Millen, the uh, Canadian cameraman that took these shots. He was waiting up into London for uh, orders to be told where to go. And he was told if he wanted to film D-Day, he'd have to go to Southampton and here he is. I think he must be standing on the Royal Pier to get some long shots of the first casualties back from D-Day. We've already seen in the previous video in this series uh, casualties landing at S1, but obviously this is the, the here are casualties landing at S2. The town key in the background, uh, there's the dolphins that we could see. See that landing stage there, or the walkway we can see in the background? That would have been used to steer the ship 
the landing ship tank onto the uh, crack rep place in the embarkation hall. It's been carefully planned to avoid congestion at any one landing point on the English coast. As each ship disembarked its wounded, those cases needing immediate surgery or other treatment were moved to the nearest holding hospital. Then, as soon as they were transportable again, they were moved inland to the transit hospital serving the area. All other cases, and these were in the great majority, were moved directly from the landing point of the transit hospital, and from there were routed by special train to the north. So, uh, in the previous video, we saw how uh, a lot of the um, casualties would have been unloaded at, uh, at Terminus uh, Railway Station and taken over to Netley Hospital or um, one of the other inland hospitals. Um, I'll let this film run on. This is one of the reasons, another reason I think they should, um, Southampton should be recognised as a heritage port, world heritage site, because without Southampton we could not have done D-Day. And if you look at right at the end here, I've left it running so we can just catch the Royal Pier again uh, at the very end of this film.